Hey friends, Mindy here, and today I wanted to talk to you about your drum hardware or the hardware you might be playing on and how to adjust it. Um, if you watched the last little lesson, we talked about how to set up the drum set for your personal body, the, the throne height, where the snare will go, the height of your cymbals, etc. So today I wanted to just show you the pieces of equipment and what you do to adjust them. If you didn't know, my name is Mindy. I'm a private drum instructor in Los Angeles, California. I also give virtual lessons. So anywhere in the world, you can hit me up and we can get started with private lessons. As well, I have this YouTube channel where I share little mini lessons, drum tricks, tips, and fills and beats, little lessons to help you out on your drumming journey. If you're enjoying these, please feel free to subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And let's get started with your equipment. So, even whether you have your own set or not, one thing you will want to own is a drum key. So, you'll see drum keys kind of have a little square right there. See? So you can adjust what's called lugs. So, there'll be a lot of different lugs. You'll use this for tuning your drums. Also, some of our pieces will have lugs that are used to tighten it to keep it in extra place keep it extra tight in place so you're not playing and suddenly your cymbal stand or your hi-hat stand drops or your throne, that can be annoying. Um, yeah. But if you're new to drumming, you might be completely new to this hardware and not really know where to start when it comes to adjusting stuff. Maybe you don't have your own set and you're going to a private studio to practice. Maybe you're sharing a drum set with another person who's a different height as you, so once you come into the studio, you need to adjust it for you. So let's get started. I would like to start with drum thrones. So I have a couple different thrones here with me. Um, there's one, there's a, usually three basic types of thrones with different ways to adjust. So I have two of the three. I'll kind of explain the third. But we'll kind of start with my main throne. This is the one I use for like shows and stuff right here. So let's see here. Basically, I kind of talked about how when you're sitting on your throne, you want to make sure your hips are above your knees. You want to feel comfortable to where you can move your legs and you feel balanced in your core, not like you're having to lean back to comp compensate and putting pressure on that back. Just nice, balanced, so you can play those pedals comfortably. So maybe you need to raise or lower that seat once you get to the drum set so it's for the right height for you. So this stool does what's kind of called a swivel. So you kind of see how it's kind of going up and you move the other way, it starts going down. You'll notice if it's a swivel one because when you look underneath, there'll be like a little spiral um, from like the, the seat top that goes into the bottom part of the stand. Cool. So. First thing to problem solve, if you sit down, you swivel and it's not moving, the, the seat is usually a separate part for packing. So oftentimes what it is is that the seat's just not tight on the, on the throne part. See there, you see the swivels? And then that's where this seat goes. So problem solving number one is just, we're gonna make sure this is tight. So, just tighten it. There's that little screw. I'm sure you know righty tighty, right? <laughs> cool. So once it's tight, it should swivel. Um, not every swivel throne has this, but mine does. So there's this little, you see right here, it's like a big silver thing that swivels up and down as well. This just locks it in place. So once you're at the height you want, you can swivel this down, tighten it, and then that just makes it so while you're playing, you don't start swiveling and moving up or down. It keeps it where you like it. So if you come across a swivel throne, that's what you're going to do first step when you sit, sit down to a new drum set. So in my studio, I also have this nice short little stool that I use for... Ooh, lower that. 
I use for like, you know, the children because this one only goes down so far. So my students need shorter thrums. And this one is where we're gonna put our drum key to work. So, you'll see it has the screw that allows you to like lengthen. It just kind of slides, but it also has this reinforcer. So basically, you figure out the height you want and tighten it with that screw there. And then this little reinforcer piece, what we're gonna do, take your drum key, so it has that little square. Can you see that lug right there? Little square. So you'll just loosen it and slide it to where the height you're looking for, and then you'll tighten it. And what that's gonna do is make it so if the swivel little turnable swivel thing um, or key <laughs> if that loosens you still have that reinforcement which because of the drum key is extra tight so it'll keep you in place these ones are the ones where it's at more at risk where you're playing and all of a sudden you just drop so that's why that reinforcement's there third kind of stool that I don't have with me will kind of look like this so this one's kind of more heavy duty. This one's a little cheaper, but still good. The other one will have holes along the adjustment part. So you'll see holes. And then at the bottom where this uh, piece goes into the bottom piece, there'll be a little groove like a U. And basically there'll be a screw that you put through whichever hole is the height you're looking for. And then you'll line it up so that screw kind of falls into that U, which keeps it nice and tight. Usually the screw will have, um, it'll go through and it'll have something similar to this adjuster key on the end that allows you to adjust that screw. Those are fairly safe. One thing, if you come across those that's sometimes hard is if someone's using it for a long time, they've been in that height for a while, it can sometimes be hard to like move it out of that little U and pull it out so you can change the settings. So I feel like those are usually more personal ones, but you will come to studios that have those and you may be using like a friend set who's, you know, taller than you and you need to shorten it or vice versa. So if you come across that one, there's a little tip for that. Cool. So that's your throne. I'm going to grab the next piece and then we'll get started. All right. All right, so let's take a look at our snare stand. There's a lot going on on this stand, and these also will be similar if you have a tom that is not connected to your bass drum, but it's kind of floating. You might have a tom that's on one of these stands. So just so you can be familiar, your snare placement is really important. After your seat, you wanna get that snare in the right place next. So remember, um, once your seat's done, your bass pedal, find where your feet just naturally lie when you're kind of spread eagle here. And that's where you're gonna put your hi-hat pedal, nice angle, bass pedal, nice angle. So remember, if the bass drum's facing forward, your leg will be facing forward, but you'll kind of be facing diagonal towards your snare. So you want that snare right there. Um, I usually say a little lower than belly button so that you're not having to do any like shoulder slumping or wings to get a nice good angle there. Depending on the music you're playing, you might want a very flat snare, which I feel like is really good for punk or rock, metal, anything where you're trying to do some room shots in there. Usually if you have a bit more slant, that's more like like jazz, sometimes um, like blues, sometimes you'll get that with different beats where you're trying to use a lot of rudiments, kind of getting more dynamics on the snare, not so dependent on room shots. So the snare stand, as well as holding your drum, raising up and down, also slants. So let's get started looking at that. First thing, you know, so at the bottom, the legs, they usually just have a screw. You figure out how you want them. I don't like it super flat, but if it's too high, it might get where you don't have balance. So I usually go about halfway. That doesn't really affect the height. It's more just your base. And then this screw right here 
is going to affect the height where the middle piece here goes into the bottom up and down do you see that i have a line of fingernail polish that is from going on tour i use the fingernail polish to mark my heights so that i can easily set up really quick <laughs> And then as well, um, if someone else was helping me set up, they can easily see what height it is. And then when I get on the kit, I just have to make minor adjustments. So, next you'll notice right here, we have this screw. This is what's gonna give you that slant. So, when I loosen that, I can get my slant going that one right there. Now like I said, I usually play flat, so I'll just kind of keep it back to flat. Now you'll notice there's these usually three little prongs. Look like a claw machine, huh? They open up. That's where your snare is going to go. So you'll see a little screw right here. You can move it down and then that gives you more room to open wider which is what you're going to want to do when you first put that snare in there. So it's wide enough. Let's put our snare in there. Um, one thing I like to do, not super necessary, but there's this little piece on your snare. What this will do is loosen your snares on the bottom. So when they're loose, you don't hear them. Sometimes you might use that effect. That turns it back on. Sometimes you want to loosen it when your musician buddies are tuning because the bottom head if is tuned to, let's say, E. When your bass player hits an E, it's going to rattle, and you'll hear those snares rattling. So sometimes it's polite to turn your snares off when you're not there or when other people are tuning. But with this, wherever I'm setting my snare up, I like to have it away from me. So it's kind of either on the other side or it's right here in front of me, but I try to avoid having it on the sides just so it gives me, it's not sticking out and I'm not hitting my knee on it. Sometimes, you know, you don't, you just have to have your legs wider just by a little bit, but that's just a little tip I do with the snare. So, um, right now, you know, this one's a little lower than I usually go, so adjust it so it feels nice, solid, ready to go. Um, I do like to kind of, you know, scoot in enough that where my knee isn't going past my toe on the bass pedal, but it's still fairly close to me. All right. We'll move on to the next piece of equipment you're going to adjust. All right. Another piece of drum equipment that has a lot of minute adjustments you're going to have to work on is your hi-hat stand, which I would usually set up after I get my snare and bass drum aka where my throne is at the good heights. So, um, basically you want to, let's look at the bottom here. So some have just two legs, some have three. Um, the springs, usually you're not going to have to adjust the springs unless it's your own set, but you'll see basically the pedal has a chain. When you push it, it pulls this thing up and down, which allows you to get that click when you hit your foot and open it and close it when you want to. Pedals, sometimes if your pedal's moving around, it's because these two little uh, bars are not lined up right and then you get that kind of action. So if that's the case, you just make sure that the little pieces go in those holes, which is gonna keep it nice and steady where you want it. Now with this right here, Sometimes you might want not have it right between the two legs. Sometimes you might want to have it closer to one leg. Example of when this happens is when you have a double bass pedal and your other pedal needs to be right there. But if you don't have that double bass, I would have it right between the two legs. And this also brings it up and down. So when you're on the ground, you know, you don't want this, you want this still touching the ground. So you kind of are gonna Figure out how you can have your legs where this is touching enough that it's sturdy. Your legs are sturdy. Usually just by putting it on the ground and pushing down, you can get to that point you want. And then you'll just tighten it there. 
Um, I'm gonna take this part off just so you see what's going on. There's really thin little piece here. And um, right now this is actually one of my backup stands. It has a stripped little screw place and this has a little bend to it, but we'll use it anyway, it still works. So you'll see there's a little thread on the end of this and when you take off the middle piece, you'll see just a little in-between place where you're gonna screw that into. Let's look at that. See that little one where it's gonna fit perfect? That's where this thin thing goes into. So sometimes it might be loose and you'll just wanna make sure it's tight before you start playing. All right, so just kind of get it back in there. And then you'll notice right here, I have another one of those adjusters that kind of reinforces it. There's a screw that sets your height once you put this part in right there. Now on my set, this screw is stripped. Um, so I'm just using this to adjust mine. You'll see it also has like a little claw. That kind of just helps you line it up so that let's see, it kind of fits in. So it just locks it in place a little more. There, nice and reinforced. And see it top here? There's a little fuzzy. That's gonna protect your cymbal so it's not rubbing up against straight metal. Hi-hats have two cymbals. They'll usually tell you which one is top and bottom. Bottom tends to be heavier. So this is my bottom. So you'll basically put it on upside down. Just through the hole, rests on that little fuzzy. Now the top symbol goes the opposite way. So almost like it'll look like a alien spaceship kind of situation going on. I'm gonna take off the clutch so you can see how that works. So this is your hi-hat clutch. This one is a pretty basic one. It has a little screw to tighten it. There's a screw here, a fuzzy symbol goes there, then you'll put on the next fuzzy and this screw to adjust it so it keeps that symbol right between those two fuzzies. Occasionally when you're playing, the, the screw that holds it in place will get loose. You'll know because the symbol will look a little wobbly. Sometimes it happens in shows. You might just in between songs have to take it off really quick and tighten it again. So just be mindful of that as you play. And put that screw back on. Cool. You know, line up the little hole with the thin piece. Now how I usually adjust it is I just put my fingers in there. I don't want a really wide opening, but I don't want, I want them where they're not super touching. So I'll put my hand in there, make sure it has about an inch, and then I'll tighten this. So, that sounds good. I can get a nice click. I can get a tight sound. I can get a loose sound. Hi-hat, there's so many different sounds you can make out of it. Um, one tip I use when I'm putting on that hi-hat clutch um, I put it away from me, kind of like the same thing I do with the snares on the snare drum. So, so that way I'm playing, I just don't risk accidentally hitting that. And also you can tell if it's coming loose because then this will start to spin around. You'll be like, oh, I need to tighten that. So it's your hi-hat stand. Let's uh, look at the next stand, which is going to be our cymbal stands. Ready? <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this cymbal stand. So there's typically two types of cymbal stands. There's straight stands and then stands that have an extender arm. The ones with extender arms you usually can still use as a straight stand. I like to use straight stands when I can. I feel like it gives it more sturdiness. Um, usually you'll use those arms when you can't get the stand close enough to where the cymbal's where you want it. So you might have to keep the stand a little farther away 
and bring the symbol in with the arm. So this one does both. So I'm going to start with the straight one and then show you about extender arms. So these are pretty basic. Um, sometimes they have different levels. So this one, you have the bottom where you adjust how wide you want your legs, which kind of gives it its sturdiness. And then I have two different levels of screws, so it can make it extra high if needed. Um, remember, you don't want your symbols too high. You don't want them above your shoulders. You don't want to have to be reaching up to crash them. So, like I said, on tour, I usually mark them with fingernail polish for easy setup. Figure the height you want. So, at the top, um, once you adjust the height, you can adjust if you want any tilt to your symbol right here. When you use the arm, we'll need to move this for sure, but let's say you want it tilted a little bit towards you. And you just figure out where you want it and then tighten it. I do like to have my crashes pretty straight as well as my right. So, but there's kind of where you adjust the angle of your symbol. Cool. Notice at the top, there'll be a fuzzy. There'll also usually be a piece, sometimes black, sometimes not sometimes plastic, but is there on the stand that your symbol will rest on? Especially if it's metal, you always want the fuzzy. In general, you always want the fuzzy. You might borrow someone's drum set and they don't have anything, you know, but yeah. Try to make sure it has that fuzzy plastic piece so that your symbol's not resting on any metal. And um, there's that. So next we're gonna put the symbol on. have another fuzzy to help protect it. And then I'm using these nice Tama tops. They don't have any arms, so they're easier to avoid hitting on accident, hitting the top screw. They're nice and flat, just kind of tighten there. There's also maybe those ones, like I said, that tighten on the side. There's some where you squeeze, put them down and let go. Those are quick and easy. One thing personally I don't enjoy about those is that when you're moving them up and down, you're rubbing against the threads of the stand, which eventually can kind of strip them. So especially if you're someone that's using your drum set on a tour or playing out a lot to where you're constantly taking cymbals on and off, I would steer clear from those, but you know, personal choice. Cool. Now let's say you want to use that extender arm. So, this one has the extender arm. You'll see here, right here, there's a couple different screws. So one of them loosens the actual arm and the other changes the angle. So you'll screw the one that allows you to pull this arm up and out. Now it's going straight in this little hole here. But what I wanna do is the one on the side, I'm gonna loosen that, and then you'll see this kind of moves, so your hole can move the angles. So we can put the arm in there, and get it so it's kind of sticking out, right? Figure out about the angle you want it, and then you'll kind of first adjust it so it's at that arm angle, and then next you'll tighten it so that it's nice and tight in there. This sometimes you might need to rotate how you like it. Notice I have a little reinforcer on there as well. And then once it's there, you know, this thing at top where you adjust the angle, adjust it how you like it. Might have to move this over a little bit. And there we go. So a tip for these, so whatever angle that symbol is sticking out of, I like to have it kind of even with one of the legs. That offers extra support because you can see it kind of can move like a triangle. It'll move where the two legs are, but it's harder to get it to move into the one leg. So let's see. just kind of see how the leg is even with the arm. 
and the back part of the arm is going to the space at the bottom. So those are how you're going to adjust your cymbal stands once you get on the set to make sure everything's perfect for your body so that you have a nice smooth playing, playing experience. And uh, next we'll look at a couple other pieces on the drum set you might have to work with, the toms and the bass drum pedal. All right, let's look at the floor tom. It usually has three legs. They'll have these little, where they connect <laughs> is right here down towards the bottom. And the little screws just let you adjust the height. The legs kind of go through. So if you want them taller, you'll have less sticking out. And you can make them shorter by having more sticking out. I usually like with my floor toms to have it where the edge closest to my snare is kind of equal with my snare. Occasionally I'll add a little bit of tilt into my floor tom. Just I feel like it helps me kind of go back and forth smoother, but not everyone does that. Some people have them flat. So once you have your snare adjusted, I would go over to your floor tom, get it lined up nice, make sure your knee has room in between for using your bass pedal. And yeah, you just got three legs there, nice and easy to adjust. All right, so the next part, we're gonna look at adjusting your tom when it's attached to the bass drum. So here, there's different ones. This one has a ball joint, which kind of allows it to move around within there. Um, kind of would just unscrew this. You'll notice, let's see here. Sorry, <laughs> trying to get a good angle, so you're not seeing me, but. You'll loosen it. Oh, and see there, you can kind of adjust your tom accordingly. I usually like to have it kind of even with my snare. So it's a nice short trip from snare to high tom and a little bit of tilt on it. Some people have them straight up and down. I feel like that makes for a lot of space where you have to hop up. This kind of makes it a little bit smoother. And then beyond the ball joint, you can raise this to be higher or lower. You notice there's that reinforcer where you'll need your drum key. Um, another reinforcer where beyond the main part, you can adjust how high you want the single tom. As you can see, I could have two toms if I'd like. Sometimes you might have a cymbal, a short cymbal stand coming out of there. And you can also use this part right here to slide it out and then that way if you want it further over or further in you can adjust that as well lastly let's talk about hooking up that bass drum pedal it's usually going to be hooked up when you go to a studio but you may need to so you'll notice right here you have this little adjuster Ooh. so obviously this is the bottom there's usually a little movable lip here, and what happens is in that space is where the rim of your bass drum is going to go, and then you're, we're going to tighten it around. So, we'll kind of scoot it up. You might need to lift your bass drum a little bit to get it under there. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Let's see here. <laughs> there we go. Lift it up, slide it on. And then you'll tighten it. Different tighteners. The one I have is right here on the side. Sometimes there's one right up top there. Whichever way usually works. We'll get more in depth about adjusting your spring action and pedal later. But those are usually the basics once you hit the studio, someone else's drum set, and you want to set it up perfect for your body.